inaugural South Metro Fire Rescue Regional ARF Training Center course. Keep in mind, it's going to be smoky as all get out, and it is tight. Even though you, I mean, you looked at it earlier, it's a little bit different when we're on air and we're in smoke. Okay, and planes are, it's, it's, a, it's a fun time. What we need is for everybody is obviously get in. We've got how many how many seconds do we have to get in? Essentially, 90 seconds from the well from the fire. Putting the fire out, we've got 90 seconds. We want to get in as quick as possible. All right, that first victim we found, I think it was 27 seconds. Hey, you take left, you take right. Hey, copy, red two on scene. I believe I've got you doing primary search. Copy, red two, primary search. When an aircraft has an incident, has a crash, uh, or they have to land with their landing gear up, um, there's often a threat of fire and the need to rescue people that are in the airplane. Courtney! Fire's out, go pop that back door. And these firefighters are the ones that respond when there is a plane crash, and they get the people out, they put the fire out, uh, and they mitigate the hazard. Being out here is important, working with our neighbors, working with our partners, making sure everybody has the ability to handle emergencies when they happen in their area and get started. Regional collaboration in the fire service now is paramount. So being able to have other fire departments that we respond with come to these classes and learn about aircraft rescue firefighting uh, helps us because we'll respond with them, they'll respond with us, and we all have the same understanding of how that those operations work. Hey, will you guys go in, soak the cockpit, yep. and we'll search it and secure it. Yep. And then we'll follow behind you. Stay on our pitch, wait inside the fuselage. Come up, shut down, get it to the door. Yeah, we'll Roof to the top, I'll go left to the nozzle, and then we'll push right. You know, we train to have it happen on the airfield, but they don't always happen on the airfield, so we have to be prepared to be able to run, respond to these plane crashes wherever we might be, so we're gonna need to use different tactics. So this this uh, training facility gives us all the uh, opportunity to do it from the ground, from trucks, and uh, do it well out without operating. So this particular course is a, a three-day course, and that course begins with curriculum that talks about all of the different uh, planes, airport facilities, uh, support that can help actually with some of this, and it just goes through A to Z on air crash rescue firefighting. Uh, the second day, they spend four hours with one of our engineers, uh, who's a subject matter expert in pumps and foam and air crash apparatus, and they learn the theory behind air crash firefighting, and more importantly, the new PFAS free foam that we're using. Uh, we're using what's called a fluorine free foam, or F3 now, uh, it has completely different properties than AFFF, which was the fluorinated foam. So we're having to teach a lot of that. So we'll spend that afternoon talking about those. And then on day three, it's all practical. They go through several different scenarios. Each firefighter has to do a search. They have to put out an engine fire, a brake fire, a fuselage fire, uh, a compartment area fire. And they, they learn how that works and how flammable liquids fires work and how they behave so much differently than, say, an automobile on a highway. We just concluded our, the first uh, certification process for uh, South Metro, Bennett, and Larkspur firefighters that are going through uh, the state of Colorado uh, ARF certification class. In any type of fire certification, the, the test is kind of that end point to make sure that you've passed. In the case of aircraft rescue firefighting, there is a practical test and there's a written test. The test that these students passed this past week was um, going in and fighting fires for, say, a brake or an engine or a cockpit or a fuselage uh, or um, a dunnage area for equipment. 
So it's important to make sure that everyone has the ability and understands the differences in aircraft firefighting versus structural or automobile firefighting. The state testing portion is complete. Okay, so congratulations, you guys all passed. The certification that our students will come out with, it, there is a state certification, and there is also what's called a Part 139 FAA certification. This particular class focuses on the state certification, and we're working towards getting an FAA Part 139 certification as well. Centennial Airport uh, in 2024 was the busiest general aviation airport in the country, uh, which means operations, landings, takeoffs, those type of things. When you have an airport that size, um, you have to have firefighters that are able to respond to incidents both on airport and off airport grounds. Um, we've all trained at DIA and other larger centers, but what we needed is we needed an air crash training center that met the needs for general aviation airports. There's over 70 general aviation airports in Colorado. So we wanted to build not only a course for our firefighters, but we wanted to build an ARF course for non-ARF fire departments that have an airport in their district. So Bennett Watkins, uh, we also cover the Colorado Air and Spaceport. Uh, that's our uh, main airfield in our district, but we also butt up next to uh, DIA, so we have uh, some threat from any of their large aircraft if we had any absolute emergency. And so they also have some general, general aviation. So we have a lot of flight path in uh, Bennett Watkins Fire Jurisdiction. And so with the three uh, agencies here today, uh, we kind of get to share each other's training and uh, what we can learn from each other. So. I'll tell you what, back her up, your primary search, and I need you to check the cockpit. Typically, we would have to pay $1,500 a student to send them to class. And we had 13 students in this class. So you're just shy of $20,000 to send all of our people to another school. Uh, with this, we're utilizing our instructors, so they're getting the instructor time. They're working with the students that they're going to work with on incidents. And we brought in uh, seven outside students, and we only charged $1,000 a piece for that. So we were able to bring $7,000 in tuition fees to offset our instructor fees and our propane. And those are probably about a break-even point at $7,000. This class uh, had 23 students uh, that, uh, that participated and all 23 passed the three-day uh, class and, and the JPRs and, and hopefully all 23 will, will pass the state written which will bolster the uh, amount of state certified ARF folks that, uh, that we have in the state of Colorado. Our next goal is to develop the uh, ARF firefighting for the non-ARF fire department. So to take the departments such as like Elizabeth or Franktown or Castle Rock, departments that are in our approach zone and teach them uh, an operations level course so that they can safely operate in an air crash incident. Uh, they understand some of the nuances of, of air crashes like sequestering the fuel and figuring out if the plane came from Centennial or if it was going to Centennial uh, and the important things that happen with that. So our goal is by uh, the end of this year to have that curriculum ready to be able to offer the curriculum to any fire department in the state of Colorado or in this region that wants it.